NASA is getting closer to returning to the moon. In about a year, the Artemis II crew will fly around the moon, and the goal, paving the way to land the first woman on the moon and future missions to Mars. And Connecticut businesses are playing a big role in this historic mission. So here to talk about Connecticut's impact uh, on the latest space race is Captain Lee Marin, a NASA astronaut, and Marsha Lindstrom with Space Launch System Strategic Communications at NASA. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having us. Okay, thanks first, us. we got to talk about tomorrow's event because you're here for a reason to, to talk with people. So do you want to talk about what's going to happen tomorrow? Who's invited? Sure. So it's mm -hmm. we are we are having a, an, a community event at Goodwin University, and it's for whosoever will, whoever would like to come. But we'll have a STEM hour from 5:30 to 6:30, mm -hmm. and then we'll have an Artemis talk show panel with Captain Morin and other uh, NASA folks uh, will join us, and that's from 6:30 to 8. So and they'll be able to ask him anything, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll talk a lot about why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So they get a chance to meet a real astronaut. So can you talk about what you did? What was your mission? I was on uh, a shuttle mission, STS-110. Mm -hmm. That was the fourth mission to the space station. And we took up a piece of the great truss that holds the solar arrays. And we bolted that. I, I went on two spacewalks to bolt that in place. And that was extended on each side mm -hmm. to be uh, as long as a football field. And that holds the solar cells that power the space station. That's pretty impressive. And those spacewalks are really fun to watch. We, <laughs> I used to watch them live on the morning show. And mm -hmm. it was they're really, really fun. All right, let's talk about Connecticut's impact and Connecticut businesses um, that have contributed to the Artemis missions. What's so significant about our state's impact? Can you speak on that? Well, there's a lot of high-tech uh, businesses here in Connecticut. And to build something as complicated as a spaceship that can go to the moon and lead the way onto Mars and return to the surface of the moon, you need a lot of cutting-edge technology. And there are thousands of people across the country, and many of them are here in Connecticut. And they make critical components like batteries or the cables or, or engines. All of those things come together. And to be able to come to Connecticut and meet those folks and see what they do, they can just show us how they do their jobs and to tell them how important it is, what they do, because our lives depend on, on their quality of their work. Yes, so. and it's really cool, too, I'm sure, for people who work in that industry to 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 meet right with NASA and really see a face to the projects that they're working on. I'm sure that that's really. They're very excited to meet us, and in yeah. many cases, they're very excited to introduce their children to us. Exactly. And that I think is probably the most rewarding part of this whole job is being able to meet the children and inspire the next generation. Let's talk a little bit more about that. I'm sure you've seen that that poll that they did on kids, right? That they'd rather be a YouTube star than an astronaut. When I heard that, <laughs> I was I cringe. I'm like, please don't say that. Why is it so important? important then for our future generations to really learn about space exploration and, and learn about what goes on behind it. That is going to be the key to the uh, scientific careers of the future, mm -hmm. is really being involved with that cutting edge. And if you can engage someone at a young age so that they really learn to apply themselves and really dig in and learn the details, whatever they do in their lives, that will uh, help them and leave them in a situation where they'll be able to learn and contribute back to our country. And when is Artemis, when the, when's the next one going up, Artemis 2? Right now it's scheduled for 2025, uh -huh. and then following that there will be a mission in about another year, and that's as scheduled now. Of course, there's always contingencies working and to make sure that we're still flying, And uh, but we're, we delivered the core stage of the rocket, the mm -hmm. big orange, it looks like the external tank, but it's larger than that. Um, it already has the engines in it. We delivered that just about two and a half weeks ago. Wow. Um, and we've got uh, two more adapters to send down. One, one will go next week. And then so we're getting ready to stack in the near future and uh, be ready to go. And we're really, you mentioned inspiration. Artemis is really about three things. It's about science and discovery. It's about American leadership in space. And it's also about inspiration. And as Captain Morin said, about inspiring the next generation STEM workforce, which is so important, not just to us, but to the 60 suppliers that are in the Connecticut in the state of Connecticut. Yeah, and I'm sure that there's hopefully some future astronauts or at least uh, future scientists watching us right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah, we're inspiring the next generation. All right, thank you so much, Lee, Marsha. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.